Hey, good morning. It's Pastor Steve here again for our session on baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is our third and last week on this topic. And I want to encourage you. Here we are in my prayer room. And we talk about this. We're, we're in my, in my, my hammock. Hey, we're all in the hammock together. What a great time. <laughs> Here we are. I'm worshiping. I'm spending time in the Bible, taking notes and reading things. And, and I've been doing this all on the same day. That's why I've still got the same clothes on I had on three weeks ago. Actually, I did all three sessions, half hour sessions in one morning. I got up and I started reading the Bible one day and I came across a verse, Mark chapter one, verse say it. I indeed baptize you with water, but he, talking about Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so I started this little teaching on baptized with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the one that is said to perform the baptism. And so we asked Jesus to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And we started talking about this power encounter, this exciting life, how you can have more, do more, see more, miracles, wonderful things. We talked about the meaning of the word baptism. We went to the word baptism means to dip, to dye. That means to soak clothing in a color, to change the color of the clothing, to immerse, to plunge, to submerge, to overwhelm, to imbue, to engulf, to pour out on. This word baptism is, is so much more. It's like getting a cup of water and not just filling it with water and drinking it. It's taking that water to a big source, like a swimming pool, and dunking it right under and watching the water rush into that cup and that cup's not just filled up inside but all the way around it it's baptized and we talked about the the baptism in the holy spirit that happened in uh, in the book of acts acts chapter 2 all of these verses cross reference led to that experience in advance we were leading to there and then we went to the story in 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 the book of in, in book of acts with cornelius's house and we see how peter points back to the book of acts to that same experience talking about the baptism and we looked at how peter said he was reminded of what john said the words baptism he said then i remembered the word of the lord how he said john indeed baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit it. And this verse cross references back to the book of Acts. So it's all pointing forward from the four Gospels Mark, Luke. We see it's in Matthew and John. All four Gospels point forwards to it. And then we see encounters in the book of Acts pointing back and talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the central empowerment story of the gospel. And we also look through Acts chapter Acts, Acts chapter uh, 1 verse 8. And we look there and we, we sort of put my pen in there because we're coming back there later. <laughs> we saw in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And we said that if you, you would receive power, we said there that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And, you, and you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And so we see that this power comes on because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we saw in Acts chapter 10, we saw the story of Cornelius's house. When we saw him preaching in Cornelius's house, that he got to this one part and he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power, who went about doing good and healing and uh, you who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we see how Jesus was baptized on, on the day of his baptism by John. But then John looked up and saw the Holy Spirit come down and fall upon Jesus and baptize him with all power. And we talked about how Jesus was given all authority, all power, all anointing by the Father. And then the, Jesus came and gave that to the church. And this happened through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We saw in Acts chapter 3, we went through the story of, of in Acts chapter 3, because of this power, they got up and went out and did miracles. We saw the story of the lame man healed. We saw at the gate, we saw, and Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankles his bones received strength 
and the, Peter and John were walking past that beautiful gate, going to a prayer meeting midday, I believe it was. Sorry, ninth hour, yeah, midday. And so we saw that the situation, this beggar got lifted up and got healing in his feet. He hadn't walked, never had walked. And this miracle encounter. So they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and did miracles. And we want to understand that each one of us can have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We can welcome the Holy Spirit to baptize us, to overflow us, to to submerge us in the presence of Jesus. And there are many promises throughout the Bible where, and Jesus even said in Acts, we go to the beginning of Acts chapter 1, it was in the, the verses that I had here at the beginning, but I'll read it from the Bible. 1, 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them, talking to the disciples, 120 of them, not to depart from Jerusalem. Actually, he talked about 500 the day, a few, for the first 40 days, 500 of them. He, he showed himself to over 500 people in the 40 days after his resurrection. And on the 40th day, he was, he was he was lifted up into heaven and then they went to Jerusalem for 10 days and fasted and prayed and then the day of Pentecost happened happened Acts chapter 2 but let's look what he said before that all happened just before he was ascended up into the clouds he said being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he had said you have heard from me for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And so what Jesus is saying there is he's teaching us, proclaiming to us. He's, he's saying, and you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so we see there happen in Acts chapter 2, baptized. And then in Acts chapter 3, we saw because of the baptism, they went out and did healings and miracles. And then we saw in Acts chapter 6, 10, we saw they went into Cornelius' house and preached in Cornelius' house. And the whole house got filled with the Spirit, talked about the power of Jesus. And it said, and the Holy Spirit it says here, can anyone, we looked here, while Peter was still speaking, those who, those words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word and those of the circumcision, the Jewish people <laughs> who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. This word pouring out, it's not a little trickle. It's not a little dribble. It's not even filling a cup to have a little drink. No, it's just like what happened in the day of Pentecost. They were in a room. It was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then each one of them was engulfed and overflown and filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said he'd baptize them and he did baptize them. And then we see here, he says, and those of the circumcision were, <laughs> they were astonished as many as came with Peter because they, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, proving that it's not just for the Jewish. This was for the Gentiles. This was the Italian regiment. This wasn't just the apostles that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the same way and praying in tongues. For they heard them speaking in tongues and magnifying God then Peter answered, <laughs> can, we, can any of them forbid water uh, that they should not be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And, that, and, the, and, and we, remember, we go to, we cross-reference that 47a. We see 47a, it's Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Cross-reference back to the situation of the, 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 the Pentecost narrative where they were filled with the Holy Spirit and prayed in tongues and were empowered to go out and be witnesses all over the world. And so what we get from all of this is the, in a nutshell, what we see from all these verses, and I might share them today with you in a, in a, in a chronological order in some way, uh, and uh, maybe just give you the, the whole story in a nutshell to explain that Jesus was given all authority in, in heaven and on earth. And the Bible says very clearly that he gave that authority to the church. How did he give that authority? On what day? When did it happen? It happened in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2. And then and as you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can be just like 
Jesus, empowered, empowered. You shall receive power. And see, this was such an important situation that everyone, every one of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, included the story. Let's look at it. We see Mark said, I baptize, I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That's Mark 1 8. We see Luke in 3 16, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We see in Mark, Matthew, sorry, in, so we saw in, in Mark 1 8, we saw in Luke 3 16, and we saw in Matthew 3 11, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And we see in John 7 37, on the last day of the great day the feast Jesus stood. And I actually think it's the next verse. It's John 1, 32. You see, and John bore, bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending upon uh, from heaven like a dove and remaining upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. This word baptizes is a not just a once experience it's an ongoing many times who baptizes with the holy spirit and i want you to know that jesus is baptizing with the holy spirit today he's baptizing with the holy spirit every moment and so what we're seeing is that we saw that it was foretold by matthew mark luke and john but then it was also pointed back by Peter when, when he did the thing in Cornelius' house and they all got baptized with the Holy Spirit and said, you know, to, who, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And then he said, he said, then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's speaking about this encounter that happened. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, and you watch, you can cross-reference all of those verses. And I did it before, I talked to you about it. And I want you to know that we can have the, the fullness of this baptism. And again, it's not just a filling of a cup and getting a drink from the Holy Spirit and then praying some tongues language. No, it is a great power that makes us just like Jesus. Remember, one of the words for baptism means to die. You drop a white shirt in some black dye and it comes out changed in color. So we drop ourselves in this baptism of Jesus into the Holy Spirit and we are baptized. We are just, we are born again. We're just like Christ. Yes, but we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. We come out looking like Jesus, powerful like Jesus. And um, I'd like to share a, a brief story before I go into the, the gifts of the Spirit. When I was at Bible college, I was encouraged uh, to look after a, um, a an elderly gentleman who had been had a stroke. There was a man, and his his name was um, Winky Pratney. That's right. He was a traveling evangelist. He was a chemist, very intelligent man. Has written some amazing books. What a great evangelist he is. Well, his dad was a New Zealander, and he was uh, living in Brisbane at this time, near where my Bible college was in Brisbane. And him and his wife were living there, and he was a a, a, a ra ra bicycle racer. And he'd had a um, a stroke, and the whole left side of his body was left in paralysis. And actually, he wasn't moving. And they asked Bible college students who'd like to go and just look after an old guy, help him into the shower and out of the shower, wash him with his wife, help him help wash the man, not the woman, <laughs> wash the man, and help 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 him get in and out of the shower and uh, do that. And they didn't say who it was, so. I put up my hand, I volunteered. <laughs> so I find myself in this home and then I discovered who he was. He was the dad of Winky Prattney, one of the greatest evangelists of our time. And so I'm in that house and we're in there, we you know, do the shower thing, change the clothes, dry him off, change the clothes, do all the things, washing him and that. And um, she was, the, his wife was telling me how this man had the stroke and, and would never walk again. And we look at this situation, it was very sad because um, he wasn't going to walk and they said he'd never move again. And so I just, I just felt this sense of faith and passion to pray for him for a healing miracle. And I had this thought in my mind, this picture in my heart, sort of vision idea to sort of speak life 
over every cell in his body. And they said down the left-hand side of his body, all the way down his leg and all that, he wasn't going to move. And I remember he, she, his wife said, yes, because she believed in praying for miracles and healings and stuff. So we started praying. We started believing. And I'd been at Bible college. We'd been getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, been receiving the power of God, just the most amazing experiences. And, uh, and I remember I started praying for this guy's leg. And the thing wouldn't move. The leg wouldn't move. And, and I'm there speaking life. I'm just pretend this is his leg. And I'm going, life, life. I'm welcoming you, Holy Spirit, life. And I was visualizing every cell coming to life as I spoke life over these, over these uh, cells. The power of life and death were in the tongue. And so I started speaking life, life. And then after a moment, uh, I wasn't looking at the toe, but the toe started moving like that. And she said, the toe moved. And I'm like, what? And my head was down and say, life, life over the leg. And I was shocked. And, and I said, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Make him do it again. <laughs> so I just started praying again. And again, we prayed for a couple of minutes again. And the next minute, he starts to move his toe. And I looked at it. I saw his toe move. And I'm like, no way. The doctor said he's in paralysis. He'll never move again. And then he started moving his foot. And then he moved his leg up and down like that. And we were shocked. It was the first healing miracle I'd ever seen. And it was just like that story when Peter and John were outside of the gate and the, the crippled man was there and he was and he was looking up and saying, hey, have you got, some, got something for me in Acts chapter 3? And Peter says, silver and gold I do not have. They weren't bringing money to the prayer meeting, I guess. <laughs> silver and gold I do not have. But what I have in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. And he reached down, grabbed him by the hand and reached and pulled him up. and says, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. The guy rose up and walked. It says power came into his legs and he rose, rose up and healings, miracles, wonders. And he jumped and leaped and praised God. And, you know, I wasn't there in that upper room getting baptized in the Holy Spirit the same way that Peter did. And I maybe was not quite as open to it as what Peter was because he walked with Jesus for three years. But I was open in those days to it. I was open to the baptism. So I soaked in as much as I could. I'm open today. I'm soaking in as much as I can. I hope you're watching and you've been open over the last two or three weeks and you're open and you're soaking and you're ready to receive more power, more of the Holy Ghost, more anointing to be baptized. This is more than just getting a cup and filling it up and having a little drink and, and praying some prayer languages. No, this is letting the anointing, the power of baptism come upon us. As I've shared through the cross-referencing of these verses in the scriptures, it's a power encounter that God will empower you to be a witness. And so because of that, we can have what are called the gifts of the Spirit. And there are many gifts of the Spirit, but there are nine gifts of the Spirit that we can, we can see for the Holy Spirit to move on us so that we can be just like Jesus. If we look in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we look through that and we, we get to a position in there and we start to see the gifts of the Spirit, and we see the gifts, um, unity and diversity, many, many gifts and much diversity, but there is um, a, the Holy Spirit will move them through this. And so we see there, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. It's one Holy Spirit gives many different gifts. There are differences in ministries, but the same Lord, Jesus Christ. And there are a diversity of, of activities and what people do as ministers but it's the same God who works all in all. So God can do a bunch of things. But the manifestation of the Spirit, we're talking about the manifestation. This is the, the, the outworking on planet Earth of the Holy Spirit. Is given to each one, given to each one for the profit of all. So each one, each one of us is given manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. So we can act just like Christ. And so there are gifts that can come upon us. It's not just one gift of praying in tongues. It's many gifts. But we see here for, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, the, the faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So what that says at the end there is that it happens for many different people, but he can give a gift to whoever he wills. Any person, to any individual, 
Any, are you an individual? <laughs> if you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you can, the Holy Spirit at times can move a gift on your life. So you can be just like Jesus. Let's go through these gifts and have a look at how they manifest on planet Earth in us believers. We see here the manifestation of the Spirit is given for each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is a foretelling or a, or a foresight. Uh, seeing in the future where something is is down the track where you look and you say, hey, this is not going to go well. We shouldn't be here. There's and you, For some way you have an insight into the circumstances and the mechanics of the situation, looking around, and this is one that I do operate in, of uh, knowing that there is, there is, it's not natural wisdom. I'm not saying I'm a naturally super wise person, but there are times when something comes on me where I'm like, this is not going to go well. It's a, it's a warning about the future, about certain circumstances, about maybe a person or a situation. It's a word of knowledge, uh, sorry, word of wisdom, sorry, for the future. And um, to help you so you're not, not you, you know, you're kept safe. And so it's a word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. This, this word of knowledge is a knowing about something, maybe about some past situations in a person's life. And there's been times when I've been on a prayer line and I've been praying for people. And, and just as I pray for a person, all of my heart is always to encourage and connect them with Jesus. And there are times where God will, not very often, but there's times where I just know something very small and a small little glimpse of a, of a part of their life where they've been hurt or injured or pain or suffered some sort of travesty or a circumstance that could be could have been a hindrance to their future. And I would be praying for them and say, look, this person has had some sort of a, a breakup or this person's had harsh words spoken over them. And I'll say to that, that, that over the person on the prayer line as I'm praying for people and, that, and they're shocked. They're like, oh, my goodness, how did you know that? And that would just open them more to, to, to receive the, the encouragement and the healing of Jesus in their soul. So that's the word of knowledge. So we start out with the word of wisdom, which is a warning for the future. The word of knowledge is, is knowledge about someone's past or past circumstances or, or present circumstances to open people up and help them understand the reality of God. This is how Jesus manifested. We know Jesus worked in the word of wisdom for future knowledge. The word of knowledge, there were many times the disciples were walking along saying things in secret and Jesus says, what was it you were talking about as we walked along the road? And they're like, oh, no, we didn't say anything, Jesus. And he said, they were arguing about who was going to be the greatest among them. So that was a word of knowledge. And so so to another, faith by the same spirit. So, word, so we, we see here, word, we see the, the word of knowledge, uh, the word of wisdom, and we see faith, um, a gift of faith that's given to an individual. And it says there at the end there to, that it's given to individual as the Holy Spirit wills, distributed to each one individually as, a, as he wills. So the Holy Spirit might need you at one time to have the word of wisdom, he might need you at, a, at another time to have the word of knowledge. He might need you at one time to have the, the gift of healings. And so I remember, I remember the story that I've shared with you, how my wife uh, couldn't have children and I was praying for her for six months. And then one time I'm praying for her one morning and the next minute I get this sense of overflowing faith, this sense of absolute confidence on the inside that she's going to be healed. I prayed for her, confessed over her that day, and, and she was rushed to the hospital that afternoon, and all the cysts on her ovaries were burst, and the doctor said this could be for your benefit. And the doctors had said she'd never have children, but now she gets healed. She has a miracle. Ten months later, we have our first son, Jabek, and that was a gift of faith. A gift of faith is when your resident faith, your belief, does not measure up to what God wants to do in those circumstances. So the power of the Holy Spirit moves a gift of faith through you as he wills. You're an individual, one individually as he wills to each individual, distributes to each individual as he wills. See, there might be a circumstance where he wills for you and, and, and you're open to that. You're finally open to receive that. So to another, the faith by his spirit, it's all by his spirit. To another, this is when we're, baptized in the Holy Spirit. We can be just like Jesus. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. So gifts of healings, uh, the word, the, 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 the healings there is accelerated recovery. And this, I've my wife and I have moved in at many different times where the Holy Spirit has moved on us and we've, we've prayed for people and they've been healed. They've had experience accelerated recovery. I uh, saw a man walk into the church one time with a, with a split um, bone 
crap bro- broken in his in his chest plate, a fracture, and he was healed instantly. The pain went away. And my wife has prayed for little kids, and they've had had their hole in the heart restored. And we've seen little little kids deaf and healed. And we've seen you know, we've seen so many circumstances with healings. And and uh, one lady walked into our church one day, and my wife walked up to her. And the lady had a headache, and she prayed for her. The headache disappeared immediately. The lady got so scared and ran out because the the headache went away so quick. She had a migraine headache. She came back the next week. She wasn't a believer. She hadn't got, hadn't got saved yet. She walked up and she said, my heart is, I'm going through heart surgery. And can you do the same thing that you did with my head? But can you do it with my heart? <laughs> but at the same time, my wife prayed for her. And at that point, the Holy Spirit moved a gift of miracles and may have even worked a gift of faith at the same time. At that present, where the Holy Spirit distributed to each one individually as he wills. And I want to encourage you again, this is because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Having a mindset where we're not just getting our cup filled up and having a little drink and praying in tongues. No, we get consumed. We get inundated. We get overfilled, overflown, but get get like a wave of, of the Holy Spirit pouring in and soaking our lives. And that's where we yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. We become just like Jesus. Healing is to another the working of miracles. It's, it's similar, but a miracle is an instant healing. An instant healing, like a story of a guy with a glass eye in his eye. And the next minute when the guy gets prayed for, the, all of a sudden there's a burning sensation in his eye. And, and, and all of a sudden there's pain and the, the glass eye pops out. And then all of a sudden there's, a, there's an eye that forms in the head. Within the matter of minutes, he has a new eyeball where there was no eyeball before. In the story of the Bible, Jesus said, stretch out your arm. And then creation miracles, the arm stretches forth. And an instant miracle. What about when Lazarus comes out of the grave? He was dead for four days. Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> and Lazarus in the grave clothes comes out. They said, take it off him. <laughs> take the grave clothes off. And so that's a miracle. And so when we see these things, that's the way the Holy Spirit moves. As he wills, if we are willing and open to these giftings and we are baptized, to another prophecy, that's foretelling, telling what's coming. God do, does things in, in the movement of, 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 of prophecy. He'll speak it forth by a prophet first. And that's a preacher of God's righteousness. That's a preacher of God's will. And that's foretelling something that is to come. To another discernment of spirits, having a clear understanding. This is a spirit of fear. This is a spirit of lust. This is a spirit of mammon. This is a spirit of deception. And it has a clear understanding, clear insight to know this is the spirit. Cast the thing out. Get out in the name of Jesus. You're gone. Fear, be gone. And so speaking and addressing those spiritual entities, having the power that Jesus did to another different kinds of tongues. And so this isn't just the gift of prayer language tongues. It's a gift, a gift of many different tongues where you may be in a culture and you're speaking Arabic and you've never been taught Arabic. In the book of Acts, they spoke languages that came out that were of the day, many languages of uh, Mesopotamia, Cappadocia. Uh, you know, and, and so many areas around where the Jewish came in and they spoke all these other languages. And these these got, these people in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, you look at it, Acts chapter 2. Oh, we can't go there now. We don't have time. And they started praying in these languages, worshipping and praising God in all these tongues and languages, other tongues. And they were diverse tongues, many languages. And they were preaching the glories of God. And now Paul the Apostle also says, I would that you'd pray in tongues. I pray in tongues more than any of you. I speak in tongues of angels and speak in tongues of men. And what he was talking about was glossolalia, speaking with heavenly languages and speaking with earthly languages that he had never been taught to preach the glories of God. It's all about speaking the glories of God, worshipping, uplifting. It's, there's no glory to man. There's nothing. It only in, invigorates your spiritual experience. It's all about God focus, not about glory to humans at all. And so we look at that. That's what the gift of tongues is. We see and uh, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. And so Paul talks in the book of Corinthians a lot 
about tongues and interpretation of tongues, about right order. If you're going to speak in tongues in a church service, you better have an interpreter. The word interpreting tongues does not mean you give an actual word by word by word recount of what was said. The word interpreting is giving a sense of understanding of what's been spoken. And I've seen this in prayer meetings where people are praying in tongues and all of a sudden someone will get a revelation in English and start speaking a prayer out. And they're basically saying, this is what we're praying. And it was inspired by that gift of tongues over there. This is a, is a is a is a an interpretation of it and what it is it's for public edification and it can happen in church services it can happen in prayer meetings it can you can do it on your own in your own prayer language when you're praying to god and then all of a sudden you get an interpretation in english and you just know what you've been praying for and then you pray it out in english it's so powerful just work with the holy spirit but we see that all of these gifts manifest but one and the same spirit works to all works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills so it's as he wills it doesn't mean that only one gets one gift it means as he wills anyone could operate in all nine but at one time one person's manifesting just <laughs> maybe just a gift of knowledge but then two weeks later he might be needed to be used in healing so now he's being used in healings or miracles or prophecy but what it is it's all according to the spirit the wisdom and the holy spirit he knows the circumstances, the situation, the openness of you and I to his baptism as we yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit will abandon the cravings of the self-life. Galatians 5, 6 and 7. Uh, 5, 16, 17. And um, I want us to understand this and, and, and jump into the principles of this. That you let Jesus baptise you fully. So the Holy Spirit can move freely at any time, anywhere. And want your heart just to open up right now and just receive. Just say this, Jesus, I receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. I welcome you to fill me, to die me, to be just like you, Jesus. To overflow me, to drench me, to... To, to, to soak me, to make me just like you. Holy Spirit, I welcome you to come, submerge me, immerse me, plunge me, overwhelm me, engulf me in your presence as I am flooded by you right now, Holy Spirit. Flood everybody on this YouTube channel. Flood them. Let them be like you, Jesus. Let them ask you, Jesus, every day to baptize them in your presence just as john the baptist baptized in water jesus you baptize us in the holy spirit i welcome your baptism again today your baptism tomorrow the next day the next day keep baptizing us every day we would ask you to baptize us thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus for the power amen, amen. hey i want to welcome you to come along and enjoy these videos every week. Next week, you wait till you get to see what we're going to talk about. It's going to be the most amazing experience. Like these videos, share them with your friends online, subscribe if you haven't. If you have, be willing, welcome them every Thursday morning. They come out at 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> sometime during the day. Watch them, be encouraged. God bless you. Have a great week. Bye for now. <laughs>